You guys welcome to number 10 of the Derby Crowbar Live and to start off this episode we are currently top of the table we're about to play third in the table Middlesbrough and if we do win that game it will put a really nice gap between us and the uh, playoff positions just looking at the goal scorers and the sisters in the league it's interesting to see that Martin's the best assister but then you've got someone creative like Stuart Down and obviously it's probably down to free kicks that why he is um, the top goal scorer in the league and obviously we're about to play Middlesbrough so not given to give away many free kicks to uh, prevent them from winning. Carson, the second best keeper in the league. That's why I don't think we do need a new keeper at the moment. Maybe when we go to the Premier League, but for this first season, definitely not. But looking at our goal scorers, we don't have anyone. I know it's a team effort. Like we are scoring. Like obviously Martin and Vidra both got five, and Nugent's got about four. So all around we're doing well. But I would like one standout player to um, be able to pick up a lot of goals and uh, potentially get the top goal scorer in the league. So. We are going to go into the game against Middlesbrough now. I have added some of your guys' um, transfer targets. I'll have a look at those after this game. Um, but at the Riverside, should be an interesting one. I think we're going to kick, kick it off with our black kit. And um, it's an interesting sponsor that um, they've got, to be honest. But obviously Cyrus Christie should be in the lineup. We'll have to see. Here we are then at the Riverside Stadium. I think this is the second time we've played in an actual Scan Stadium. Something we can look forward to, obviously, when we get to the Premier League. Looking at the Middlesbrough lineup, then they've gone for a similar system to us. Um, Downing in behind Asamba Longa, Braithwaite and Adama out wide, and uh, Ledbetter and Clayton in the holder midfielder. Ryan Shotton and Sit Christie in that defence. It's interesting to see two former Derby County players in there, then Ben Gibson and George Friend and Darren Randolph in goal. Probably the strongest team we've come against so far. I don't think, uh, maybe uh, West Brom, but this team has got pace out wide. It's got really good fullbacks and uh, a Somba Longa up front, obviously the for former Forest man. All on the edge here with a Somba Longa. It's gone into Adama and they made it 1-0 in the first three minutes there. Just holding up the ball on the edge there with a Somba Longa. Nice camera angle actually this is to uh, show off the celebration. But uh, Adama Traore, very p p pacey player and Max Lowe has just got nowhere near him and it's 1-0 in the first three minutes. Nice bit of hold up play there I think from Braithwaite then into Adama. Not much keep could do about that. The problem is, Baluli just doesn't give me that option. But we found it into Tom Lawrence here with the shot and with the goal. Great equaliser, only three minutes later from the Welshman. And, um, you know, I was just complaining about Baluli. Like, literally just wouldn't come off their two defenders. So, the second he did it, I managed to get it to him. And uh, we managed to score a goal. If he did that, like, two seconds ago, he probably would have got the goal then anyway. Yeah, nice to see Tom Lawrence get himself on the score sheet. And uh, this is a great start to the game. Into Baluli now. Can he get the shot off? Yes, he can. And he's got his second goal, I think, for the club. That is a great goal from Baluli, showing his attributes there by managing to uh, hold off the defender quite nicely. Vyman just dinking it inside. Baluli getting held off by Clayton, I think. Was it Ben Gibson? It's one or the other. And um, yeah, he's managed to strengthen him off and uh, put the ball into the back of the net. I think it was Ben Gibson in the end, but pretty good finish, to be fair. I was complaining about his finishing, and uh, he's managed to do quite a decent one there and get us into the lead at the Riverside. Ball through here for Baker and he's managed to find the back of the net and make it 2-2. I wasn't quite sure who it was. Um, I thought it was Braithwaite for a moment but obviously Braithwaite had passed it into Samba Long and I couldn't remember who number 30 was. And of course it was Lewis Baker from uh, Chelsea. He's come off the bench and made the effect. 20 minutes to go. We have just made our subs. We've brought in Nugent, Vidra and I think Bradley Johnson in the midfield. Still a chance to win it. Looking for the outside of Vidra. He's got it. Now back inside to Baluli. And he's found the back of the net and got his second goal in this game. Vidra obviously creating the chance on a plate pretty much for Baluli. Anyone could have scored it, but luckily um, the Moroccan... I don't know if he's Moroccan or French. Let me just quickly check because I keep calling him French, but he might be actually Moroccan. He is French, but I think he used to be Moroccan. But um, nevertheless, great for us to get back into the lead straight away. Vidra just putting it across. And anyone could have been there, but uh, Baluli to get his third goal of the season. Middlesbrough on the attack here. Lewis Baker's gone past the man. He's put it into a Samba Longa. It's 1v1, and he's made it 3-3. I don't know what I was doing there, to be honest. Took me off the game for a moment, and um, yeah, they got themselves into a really dangerous area and made it 3-3. After all that hard work to get back into it again, Lewis Baker with a really nice turn. That's that's what made that goal, in a sense. And um, yeah, Samba Longa, the former Forest man, gets his first goal of the season. If you watch the last two or three episodes, every single striker goal, it's their first goal of the season. Not too sure why that is, but uh, nevertheless, still got ten minutes to go. And with 
six goals so far going in. Maybe a seventh will go. So yeah, away from home at the Riverside, I wouldn't mind a point. Because obviously they're just behind us. It doesn't change the um, points by anything. So we have got a chance here with David Nugent though. He's going to take the shot. And he's done an absolute beautiful goal there, David Nugent. Seventh in the game. And against his former club, of course. He wasn't the most well-known Middlesbrough player. He obviously went from Leicester to Middlesbrough. Played about eight, there for a year. In between the two centre-backs. And... Um, a beautiful finish, a really, really good finish. And that's what David Nugent's done all season long. Fifth goal this year puts him in line with uh, Bidra and Martin. And I hope that's the last goal in this game. And there it is, full time against Middlesbrough. A great seven goal thriller to kick off the episode. And it does a great job in the league for us as well. I think that Tom Lawrence goal that we scored was really nice. Keith Bell just waiting for the option. Baluli eventually finds it. And a really nice um, left mid kind of finish to make it. 1-0 in the game. As you can see, we had, like, they scored with every single shot, and we had 10 shots and scored 4, so probably did deserve the uh, victory in the end. Loan off here for Callum Guy from Northampton, and I'm pretty sure, or was it Port Vale? It might have been Port Vale, um, but I'm actually going to accept this offer. He's not getting enough first-team football. He's got a pretty decent potential as well. I would I would like him to get to that. If he, if he gets around mid-70s, I'd be more than happy to play him in the every now and then, because he'll be a good rotation player. Unfortunately, Guy has... Um, I don't know why you wouldn't accept it, to be honest, but uh, also Jakobsen has not agreed personal terms with Akerton Stanley. Bit of a shame, but um, we have got the scout report here for Diego Farias. Now, after that last performance Baluli did put in, I'm having second thoughts on whether we do sell him, because the only thing I'd want to do is do a straight swap, because Farias is worth 6 mil and uh, Baluli's probably worth a similar amount, so... We'll have to wait and see until we do get into the January transfer window, of course. Very good potential on Guidi. 80 to 94, of course. 65 rated starting. Very good stats as well. Apart from his handling, they're essentially all around the 70 mark. Not the best of positioning, but only 17 years old. I'm sure he can get trained up quite a bit. But for the time being, I'm going to wait. I'm going to wait because I don't need the goalkeeper right now. What I'm look looking to probably do is move uh, Jonathan Mitchell on because... At only six foot tall, he's not the best at goalkeepers. But as you can see, we are going into the next game against Burton. A big derby in a way. It's a, it's a shame that Burton aren't... Well, they did beat us last um, season, so they are pretty big. And I don't know if I do put Vidra in or not. That's the thing, because Baluli did get two goals and an assist in the last game. I'm tempted to keep him in. And I think we'll go with the same lineup. I don't think there's a need to change the team. Other than Kerry's back with uh, fitness. Curtis Davis... Obviously, we conceded three goals in that game, so it kind of does show that Kerr is quite vital to uh, keeping our goals out. Here we are then at Pride Park against Burton, a pretty big derby. Not quite as big as the Nottingham Forest derby, of course, but still probably second biggest. And as you can see, they have gone for the five of the back. Jake Buxton in that lineup, the former Derby County man. Brayford and uh, Lloyd Dyer, obviously Lloyd Dyer, a lot of pace on him. Tom Naylor, um, Connor Ripley, Luke Murphy, Matty Palmer, a player we were looking at. Don't think that's Joe Allen in the midfield. I'd be surprised if it was. And uh, Marvin Sordell and Boyce up front. No, no Jackson Irvine, of course, because he went to Hull. Um, a player that they are probably going to miss this season, and it's going to be a very tough. Like I think it's it's going to be a tougher season than the last year for uh, Burton Albion in real life. Poking it through for Lawrence here with the shot. It's been saved by Connor Ripley though. It's gone out to the edge. On to Vyman now. Going to look for Martin in the box. It's gone into Lawrence though with the header off the post. Would have probably preferred that if it went into mine because he has got the heading ability to uh, find the back of the net. But I think Tom Lawrence did actually score. I think it was his first goal as well from a header. So a little bit unlucky not to get the first goal there in the first 20. Pitcher into Martin with the shot. It's deflected. Lovely. And it has gone into the back of the net. Chris Martin. I don't know if Chris Martin will actually get this goal or not because it was a massive deflection. I think it was off Tom Naylor, the former Derby Martin as well. Um, yeah. Keep couldn't really expect that and it's actually gone down as Martin's goal, sixth goal of the season. I'm quite surprised at that because I don't know if it was actually on target or not. But I'm going to take it, I'm not going to complain. Ball into Martin, he should make it to it and he's done it. Great goal for Martin, second in this one, just before half time. Should be able to get him on a hat trick for this game because at the moment we're finding it quite easy against Burton. Obviously they're not the best of teams. Nice ball from Vidra, that link up play going well. I was going to, I was really tempted to keep Baluli in, but we just need to get Vidra back and scoring, and we're 2-0 up already at half-time. All that white to die. It's gone into the back post, and Boyce has got a bit of space. 
and they've actually found the back of the net. Literally out of nothing, a ball out to Dyer. Nobody marking Boyce for some reason. I don't know if it was Max Lowe or Kerr's fault, I'm not 100% sure, but still, very good header from Boyce, and uh, they've got themselves back into the game. Again, probably where we should have kept the clean sheet. Lawrence with the ball here. Good chance to uh, get it on the edge to Vidra. Now into Vyman. He's been tackled, and it is a penalty. Bit of a shame that uh, Martin's Patrick goal is probably going to be coming from this penalty. Uh, Tom Nail, obviously, against his former club, gives away the penalty. Just making a triple substitution here, just to rest up the players. We're bringing off Keith Bell, Lawrence, and Vyman. Bringing on Johnson, Bennett, and um, Winnell. Now, I've gone left most of the time with my penalty, so I'm going to go right this time. Hopefully, we find the back of the net and we make it 3 1. Patrick for Martin. Good to see him get on the score sheet and uh, push himself up that top goal scoring list. I think he's going to be the one, if anyone, um, to be the top goal scorer in the league. He's currently the top sister. And I wouldn't be surprised if someone from the Premier League came in for him uh, in the January window. Chance here for Burton. He's open and it's made it 3 2. Again, boys, the man on the score sheet to get themselves back into it. I think I brought Carroll far too out too much there. And um, made it far too easy for Burton. Now it is full time at Pride Park. Chris Martin getting the match ball, of course, with that lovely hat trick he did. Get in the end. He probably could have done it a lot sooner. And um, Boyce was actually quite decent for Burton. He did he did create a lot of chances. Ten rating though for Martin, and um, keeps us top of the table. As you can see though, we have had a really nice bit of growth there actually. Uh, Max Lowe, really good tackling stats now. 75 sliding. Uh, Hansen growing as well, and Guida the goalkeeper. Probably the last chance for you guys to suggest any players for me to sign as, um, well, we're about a month away from January. I may be able to get these players scouted by the end. Just looking at the lineup then, I'm probably going to pop Vidra back in. We just seemed a lot better going forwards. Obviously, Martin and Vidra link up play is just a little bit too good. A couple of players that you guys did suggest, Justin Clivert from Ajax. I don't think I'd sign him at the moment. He's, he's worth around £7 million. We'd probably have to pay around 10 as he is very young, of course. And um, Bright in... The thing is with this guy, I don't want to, I don't want to call him his second name because I just don't have a clue. But anyway, if we were going to replace with Baluli, I'd probably sell Baluli, then buy this guy because he does look quite good. Obviously, can play out wide as well. Four-star skills as well, so that's good. Um, I'm just going to wait, though, to see his full scout report. Into the next game, then, against Barnsley, away from home. Hopefully, it's not as high-scoring as the last couple of games have been. Um, we've scored 12 goals already. Well, we've not scored 12 goals, but 12 goals have happened already in this episode. Um, I will put Jordan Ibe on this um, left-hand side. He hasn't actually played this so far in this episode, so definitely want to give him a chance. And, uh, yeah, Vyman's not... He does the right thing, Vyman, but he just doesn't have that extra bit of flair that Jordan Ibe does bring. Um, but defensively, obviously, Vyman's absolutely fantastic. Winnell again, coming off the bench, and it just, it just does help the team a lot more. So I'm going to drop... Um, Tom Huddleston. I'm probably going to sell him in the January transfer window because he's just like we've got players like Hansen that are just about as good as him. Here we are then against Barnsley, looking at their lineup. They've gone for a 4-1-4-1 formation. Davis in goal, McCarthy, Jackson, McDonald, and uh, Yaidom at left back. Landu, Landu holding. Gary Gardner, I think that is, and Johnny Williams centre mid. Isgrove and Barnes at wide, and uh, Tom Bradshaw up front. Obviously, a very good scorer. We have got uh, Winnell on the bench, obviously, who can score against his former club. Let's see how we do against Barnsley. Away from home, he's nicked it here very early on. Chance to uh, get an early chance going. Now into Vidra. Back through for Martin with the shot. He's just got that... Yeah, he has got very good finishing, but sometimes he does just slightly drag it too much. It would have been a great start to the game in the first two minutes. Ball through for Keefton Beld. Can he get through and potentially pull this across to Vidra? Yes, he can. Very, very simple goal. You couldn't have found a more simple goal, in fairness. And uh, Vidra back on the scoreline. When he returns, good to see. Really good run from Keefton Bell to get Martin just finding those runs with ease. And um, should be about his sixth, I think. Yeah, sixth goal this season for Matai Vidra. Vidra and Martin, I know in real life, um, Nugent and Martin, uh, Nugent and Vidra, sorry, have done quite a nice partnership. But I, I would have really liked Vidra and Martin to uh, click because both of them have got well, completely different style, and together they should do quite nicely. Our ball three for Barnes with the shot, and he's made it one all just before half time. A great time to score for Barnsley. Just a like Martin esque hold up from um, Bradshaw into Barnes, and uh, they make it one all. Really, 
wasn't quite expecting that. They have had a few chances at Fairness Barnsley, but um, I'm going to have to restart the uh, half-time break. Just waiting for Jordan Ibe here. He's won it. Now into the box to Tom Lawrence with the header. And we've made it 2-1 straight off the kickoff. pretty much a minute after them scoring. Um, we've managed to get back into the lead with Tom Lawrence. It's nice to see him getting some goals as well. Like In the first month, I don't think he scored, and then since about October time, he scored in like every other game. And his link-up play is fantastic, I must say. That's his fifth goal. Puts him um, just behind, I think on level with uh, David Nugent, who scored quite a few as well. And there it is, full-time against Barnsley. Again, a very tight game. Only one goal um, between the two teams. I think I do need to change the slider slightly, just to make their uh, passing and maybe even shooting slightly better. But they're still, they're still doing quite well. They're literally, if we don't create chances, the other team will win. But luckily, at the moment, we've, we've just got goals coming out of everywhere. So on that note, we are going to end off this episode here. This is pretty much the last chance for you guys to suggest players looking for a centre-back mainly. That's that's the main area we do need to improve since Alex Pierce is going out of the club. Also, Curtis Davis at 33 uh, and Keo at 30, like 1, maybe 32. Uh, we definitely need someone younger in that position, of course, but we could always recall um, Farad Rawson. That's always an option we have. But yeah, hopefully you guys did enjoy this episode. Make sure you do smash the like button, subscribe if you are new to the channel, and I'll see you soon.